All right, welcome back. Now, here we are. We got ourselves a little bit of a lower pace uh, in the mandible region sculpted. I did a little bit more revisions using the uh, clip curve brush on the end there uh, from a certain shallow angle to get that serrated edge. So I'd like to go ahead and now take this time to once again reuse the uh, booleans that we have had uh, in the um, previous section uh, to be sculpted onto the top, sort of reusing what we've already had and seeing if we could make something out of it. So to do that, I'm going to first take my, uh, I took my two uh, Boolean sculpted pieces that sculpt in this major piece right here and combine them into a single sub tool using the merge down feature. Now I want to go ahead and take that very same tool and I just want to go ahead and uh, duplicate that. So that of course turns it into a mesh. That's quite all right. I don't mind. And uh, now what we're going to do is, is we're going to hit the X key and we're going to move this piece all the way up. And as you can see, we get our pieces up here. And I'm going to now hold shift and simply move this around like so until I get a nice little uh, turnaround here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and turn this into a Boolean piece. And uh, if we just kind of use these corner top arrows here, we can kind of freefully uh, move them around. Be very cautious. Uh, very unusual thing about uh, this mesh, and that is, is if you uh, have two symmetrical meshes and you intersect it, the sculptors like so, uh, and then release, you get this very weird sort of uh, situation <laughs> with booleans. And uh, it's, it's something that probably I would say is a pixelogic uh, error issue. So do your best to try to keep uh, your Booleans as best as you can for, uh, from intersecting each other when you're doing this. Let's go ahead and turn this back on to our Boolean mode. And I'm just going to drop this down and I'm going to see what it is I can get out of this. What uh, interesting, cool looking picks. Can I uh, uh, try to get without them having to clash and into one another? And let's see here. This is not. This is definitely uh, not what you would call science. This is uh, definitely uh, trial and error. Think of yourself like the sculptor that uh, is trying to search for that piece instead of trying to eyeball exact mimicry of uh, what you're trying to find here. Already I just moved this into a place that I love uh, what I'm seeing right here and uh, I may actually just hold on to that uh, for a little bit if I can. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna start by uh, first of all I'd like to move this piece up all the way. But to do that before anything I'm just going to go ahead and reset the orientation of this now um, by hitting the unlock key on this lock symbol and then going to this circle with an arrow on it and hitting the reset orientation, then locking it back up. So then I can just sort of, uh, well, I can sort of uh, get a reset orientation along the X and Z axis. And, uh, already liking a little bit more and what I can bring to the table with that. Now, I'd like to see if I can get a little straight line through there. That's not so bad. I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to work a, do a combination of this and working with the move tool, seeing if I can get something uh, a little bit more out of it, push some shapes around, see if I can uh, do something a little bit more strenuous. And remember, this is, uh, this is not science. This is uh, just finding your shape. And uh, that's what uh, 
Librarians can kind of do. They're an excellent, excellent way to flush out some interesting looking shapes. Now, let me see if I can. Uh, this is experimenting now. Let me see if I can uh, get something cool out of this. no idea what something's going to look like until I actually push it. And that's what uh, I'd like for is my hope that you, the audience, tries to find as well, is to just try uh, to do your best using both either the move tool or the cliff curve or the trim curve, preferably the trim curve as much as you can, uh, to see if you can find and edit and modify the live boolean sculptor that you see here to find some interesting and cool shapes out of it sometimes using the b or the shift f key can sometimes help me yeah that too kind of looks pretty neat Uh, now I'm looking at this and I'm kind of eyeballing this and I'm seeing some uh, difficult resolution there. Let's see if we can change that. I'll keep your eye on that and hold shift at. And uh, let's see if we can try to work that out with the clip curve since clip curve has ch uh, symmetry. Try to stay away from it as much as I can, uh, but have no choice, hold control shift, look for that clip curve and click on it and see what you can find. Already we have a nice cleaner piece here. Not so much on the other side though. is all just eyeballing and uh, for me I'm actually kind of happy with uh, this piece I may just consider Uh, it just goes again to show you there are a lot of different ways uh, that this can uh, look and uh, that's the biggest take takeaway uh, when you're editing booleans is, is that this really does have a lot of different uh, approaches uh, and you shouldn't confine yourself into thinking uh, one way yeah, you should give yourself some time to uh, basically look for shapes uh, if you can. It's it's actually kind of an interesting experience when you just fall into that really cool looking shape. Uh, like this one right here, I would be satisfied with. In fact, I think I may just call it on that. So uh, that will be for how we flush out a shape down here. If there's some, anything else you wish to... Uh, to uh, explore into on this, you please, by all means, feel free to take your time on it. But until then, the next lesson will be trying to get a base mesh out of the faceplate that we're going to extract. Thank you.